Good morning guys, it's Jager262 and welcome back to Armored Warfare News. Now I know I've been neglecting Armored Warfare for a very long time. I've kind of been throwing myself into the special events that the Wargaming company has been putting into both World of Warships and World of Tanks and doing some modeling stuff here and there. I did not forget about Armored Warfare. There's been a lot of news since I stopped covering. One of the reasons I stopped covering it was because news started to trickle in very slowly. But now that it's been about two weeks, I have enough to talk about. And I will be making more videos in the future on this topic. Hopefully we will see the update very soon for the new season and the new battle path, Age of Rage. And I will be playing Armored Warfare again and doing some gameplay videos. Later today I'm trying out a new segment for my channel where I just go and play games and talk about whatever. And I will be uploading games that I play in both World of Tanks and Armored Warfare, including maybe some Battlefront 2 or World of Warships. And if that sounds like something interesting, please subscribe to the channel so you can get a notification of when I upload that later tonight. All that out of the way, however, the thing I wanted to talk about today was this beast right in front of you, the M50 Antos. Now, as you remember, way back when I was talking about top five favorite vehicles you want to see implemented in the game, and I asked you guys to give me those lists, one of the vehicles on my list was this, the M50 Antos. And it says somewhere that it was one of the most community requested vehicles in the game, right here. And for good reason. This is a very small vehicle, for anybody that doesn't know, I encourage you to read this article, but I'll break down the major parts you need to know. It is a light support vehicle with a crew of two that uses six recoilless guns, which you see they're recoilless rifles, and it was intended to be a light support anti-tank weapon. And so when you go through this article, it'll start here, it'll tell you um, why it was developed. It started in World War II with the airborne needing more firepower to help deal damage to German vehicles. That's actually where the recoilless rifles kind of start because you can mount them on jeeps or other vehicles. This here explains how the recoilless rifles work, jeeps, tripods, that kind of thing, and how they're going to work in the game. Anybody that doesn't know, this was an airborne project developed through the 1950s. By the time we had invaded Vietnam, it went to the Marine Corps as an infantry fire support weapon instead of a tank destroyer. However, in Armored Warfare, I believe it will be a tank destroyer. I can't remember what they'll tell you at the bottom of the article. Now, how recoilless guns work. They call them lobbers, explain that they can't use kinetic energy shells such as APF. Armor piercing, fin discarding sabo rounds, armor piercing rounds of any kind. They have no rifling in them, which is why they're called recoilless guns. They basically act as giant tube launchers, which for anybody who doesn't know what that is, is it will launch a shell forward and blast all that energy into a back blast or out the rear of the weapon. So no rifling, no recoil, but that also means shells are going to be less accurate and far slower. Now they talk about what the 105mm recoilless rifle was like, what they used for, how they were used on the M10 tank destroyer, blah blah blah. Or not used on the M10 tank destroyer, my mistake. <laughs> that one used a rifle gun, but same caliber. And essentially, it's just a little bit into different rounds it'll use. We're going to get heat rounds for this vehicle and high explosive. But for anybody who's really confused by the recoilless gun aspect of this tank destroyer, read the article. But remember, if you've played the M113 ACAV, the Tier 3 tank destroyer, or the OT64, the Tier 3 Czech AFV, You've played the two vehicles besides this one that have recoilless rifles in the game, uh, which are around the same tier. This will be a tier 4 though. So you know how it operates. Those vehicles do fire very slow shells, but they reload rather quickly. They're accurate at sort of close range to mid range, and they do just fine in my opinion. I love using the ACAV and I love using the OT64. However, going into the history of how this vehicle protected U.S. Marine Corps forces in Way City 
and how it was actually used will explain, and I'm not going to give you that, but it was deployed during the Way City Operation in 1969. They were only used for one year of combat and later discarded. And it was during the operations in Way City, which is one of the bloodiest battles of the Vietnam War for any of my viewers who don't get the Vietnam War history drilled into them because they didn't grow up here in the States. That was one of the worst battles of the entire conflict on both sides. Massive civilian casualties, massive North Vietnamese casualties, and American Marine casualties. It was after the actions in Way City, actually, that the Marines decided to pull out of Vietnam. Now, they did, I believe, re-enter the conflict at a later date, but that was almost it for them. And that's kind of when the Antos career ends, because as you remember, it's a Marine Corps vehicle. They left some with the Army who couldn't use them. And that was it. And it was used primarily as an anti-infantry fire support vehicle, basically to take out houses, bunkers, that kind of thing, to aid the Marines in taking Way City. And because of that, as you can see by the images here, its armor is very thin. It's a very fast vehicle in the game. It was a very fast vehicle in real life. But the armor is thin, it's subjectable to mines and even small caliber firearms. Uh, for example, any, well, the only cannons in the game that are small are 20 millimeters, and that's going to rip through anything anyway, so just don't get hit in it. They go into a lengthy explanation of its capabilities against mines, why it went the way it did, why it didn't survive long in combat, all these things that kind of scare people, like, oh, maybe it's not going to be so good. And before I give you all the statistics, note this huge thing that they don't put on their other ones, but they're starting to, all this could change. It's a work in progress, so they might make these things different. But right now, it's a very impressive Tier 4 tank destroyer, in my opinion. But they want you to use it as an ambush vehicle, obviously. Now, the easiest way I can break this down is take the M13 ACAV, how that vehicle operates and fires. Oh, also, I should have mentioned way before, these are transfixed to the hull, so you'll have to turn your vehicle. This will be a lot like using the Typhon 2 or the weasel and that's what I was going for next take the gun characteristics of the M113 and employ the same tactics you use with the tier 5 weasel and you'll be fine this vehicle is almost the same size as the weasel it is just as fast with 60 kilometers an hour as its top speed and it will be able to traverse terrain easily hide you'll get a massive penalty when you fire your guns but as long as you just stay in the back and ambush opponents, you'll be okay. It'll be fine. Now there's, some, now, there's some cool things here that you already see that I wanted to talk about when this vehicle is actually implemented. And that is, for example, the single barrel one round per second for six seconds. So if you want to get more accuracy, you can just do one at a time. Or salvo, which you'll be firing three at once which is basically going to be a shotgun effect. So if you're in a tight situation, all six of your barrels are loaded, you get spotted by a tank, you can fire all six rounds inside of two seconds, which will essentially kill any vehicle you see at tier four. An interesting vehicle to kind of mess around with and play the vehicle will fire 450 millimeter of penetration heat rounds, 460 points of damage, to be able to deal 2700 damage for each salvo. However, if you fire the salvo, the reload time is 40 seconds for the full magazine. Obviously, low accuracy on the move, and limited traverse, which is 40 degrees to each side, which is way less than the weasel, but kind of the same thing. How it doesn't have 360, it'll be like this. So not a fixable hole, like I said. I was wrong. Uh, 60 kilometers an hour. Camo factor gets a huge penalty when you fire. But all in all, I think it'll be an interesting, interesting vehicle. Now here's where I want to get into the other news. Um, this vehicle will be part of the Age of Rage Battle Path Premium. One of the premium vehicles you grind for. However, we already know we're getting the Yugoslavian APC in the same battle path and so I don't know if that means that you only have the option to unlock one or the other which would be really unfortunate or if you can unlock both I don't know how that works 
but again everything is subject to change now aside from age of rage we do know that there will be not only missions for that battle path but there will also be new season content in regards to new vehicles new maps new missions and new story and I'm going to briefly cover that news here. Really, this whole thing was just about the M50 Antos. But if you want to stick around for this, I think it'll only be about a minute or so more. If not, the video's over. But it's going to be, for anybody who cares, Moscow Calling. It's going to take place right after the Sebastian Grimm storyline in Moscow. The new garage will be the main boulevard in Moscow. Moscow will be added as a new PvP map. And so it's going to be, they have a thing of the map, and I might do a separate video on it if you want me to. It'll be a new PvP map, and Moscow will be added into, obviously, the campaign, the new campaign for that season. That will be going off with the addition of the new French main battle tank line, or the rest of that line, really. And then a few other new progression vehicles and new crate vehicles like the um, Polish 2000 that vehicle, the W2000. New crate vehicles, new missions for those crate vehicles, and new missions for the Moscow crates outside of the battle path. What other vehicles and stuff will be coming with that, I'm not entirely sure, and that's always subject to change, but these vehicles here, the Yugoslavian Tier 4 and this American Tier 4 tank destroyer, will be part of the battle path and as you know there will not be missions to unlock vehicles anymore you'll actually unlock them via battle path progression which obviously means more battle coins and probably you'll have to buy more battle coins to do so so we'll see how that goes we'll see if it's easier or harder and i have no idea when this update's going to drop i predicted it was going to drop a couple weeks ago and they did drop update 0.29 but it's not this one it was like a patch so i really i don't know I don't know when I'll try to cover more news and again I'll be doing more Armored Warfare stuff in the play day games I'm going to do in the video after this. So stay tuned for that if you like the video please give it a thumbs up. If you like the Ontos please comment in the section below. This is actually a very exciting piece of news for me. I love this vehicle. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section below and as always thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.